I have chatted to so many writers lately and there seems to be a common theme going through these chats. The lack of somewhere to ride. Now, I'm not sure if it's just to do this time of year, if it's like the people I'm talking to, whatever. But I do think that at some point or another, a lot of riders face this. They don't have a suitable equestrian arena, manicured, beautiful, perfectly put together to ride in. And today I want to talk about a couple of different options that you can have and you can use if you find yourself in this particular situation. Okay, let's dive in. Hey there and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach and I love working with riders who are going it alone, maybe without a full-time trainer or coach to help them actually train their horse and develop their skills as riders as well. Okay, arenas. You know, as equestrians, we all have this dream of having this amazing arena at our disposal that we can use whenever we feel like it and it's going to be there and it's always going to be perfectly manicured with perfect footing and it's safe and all the stuff it might even be weatherproof okay and we have that dream but i think the reality for so many riders is well different okay and while they may have a riding space that they can make use of every now and then You know, there can be times maybe when the weather doesn't play ball or when that space is being used for something else that actually really does hinder their training and their progress because they feel that maybe due to, I don't know, questionable footing or maybe varying ground levels. Have you ever tried to ride on the side of a hill? That can be a struggle, hey? But due to these things, it actually stops you from really and truly moving towards your more longer-term goals with your horse. And it can be really frustrating because it feels like you get two steps forward only to go five back each time. And you're like, ah, you know, you, you keep having to go backwards. So if you find yourself in that sort of a situation, I want to talk about a few different things that you can do. So the first thing I want to talk about is having a less than perfect horse arena. Now, there are a few people near and dear to my heart who really and truly are struggling with this right now. And it is weather situations, this is in Ireland, <laughs> that are causing all sorts of issues in riding in fields, okay? If you've ever been to Ireland and you know how much it rains and you realize that maybe some riders only have a field or a paddock to ride in, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about right now, okay? It just ends up mucky and slippery and it's just not enjoyable. It, it actually can become really dangerous really quickly. And what you find is you might be kind of all well and good um, on the straight, but as soon as you reach a corner, which inevitably you're going to reach, you know, four on every circuit of your riding area, um, you are going to come into problems and you can feel that the horse slips and loses its balance and all that fun stuff. But also then I have people here in South Africa who their arenas are kind of baked in the sun like really baked and it becomes this um like the, the footing it's like riding on concrete actually the the ground just becomes so hard and again this is not um enjoyable it is not beneficial now i've spoken with other riders over the years who maybe the arenas are older so they might have had an all-weather arena or they still have but you know due to wear and tear and whatever a lot of other factors it's now become a bit a bit saggy can we say there's areas with dips and hollows and you know there's tracks maybe that are worn in and grooves that are worn in that it just makes like training and developing really difficult and I don't think this is a great kind of a place to work with your horse however if it's all you have well you have to try and make a plan. And what I would suggest in that situation is to find the flattest piece of land that you can find. And if you could stretch it to about 20 meters by 20 meters, there's so much you can do in that space. Now, you're probably thinking, ah, come on, (laughs) 20 meters by 20 meters. But really there is. The other thing I would suggest in that situation is don't focus on circles. You want to really and truly begin focusing on riding in squares and in corners and in straight lines because 
doing so is going to just allow you a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying never do a circle, okay? Of course you can do a circle. But when you are focused on writing squares or rectangles, whatever the case is, okay, and really focusing on the corners, you can get so much more out of it, even to the point where you could actually use some ground pole exercises. Now, if you don't believe me and you're thinking, Lorna, that is absolutely nonsense. No, no. I have a previous episode of the podcast, so I am going to link to it here for you that you can um, you can use that. And then also, if you are in that particular situation and you do want to go further, if you join Connection back in August of 2020, um, we had a group of audio horse riding lessons titled Beneficial Exercises When Riding in a Smaller Space that you can use there as well. Um, and there's PDFs and everything in there. And of course, the audio horse riding lessons for you to use as well. OK, so let's say you've now got yourself your little your little plot of land. Well done. OK, there's only so much you can do in your little plot of land and it's always the corners like we just mentioned. So we need to start thinking of additional areas that we could use and this is where roads or lanes come into play. Now if you don't have suitable roads or lanes I think that being able to think outside the box is good in this situation. So there may be open fields, even if those fields are belonging to neighbors that you could maybe approach or you can ride yourself and using the perimeter, stick to the headlands, okay? But using the perimeter of your fields, anybody who's been hunting will know that term, um, but using the perimeters of your fields to... um, kind of mimic what a road or a lane would be okay because when you have this area that you can ride that's generally level and now most lanes are generally level now I do know like here in South Africa um, there's a lot of gravel roads in Ireland we have bog lanes yet they can get a little bit now up and down okay I'm going to be honest but they're generally for the most part they're generally level ish okay and you'll find kind of spaces in them that okay yeah you do need to slow it down but you'll find other spaces that you can work in trot and even sometimes in canter don't canter on tar roads or gravel lanes btw just my opinion but um if you could um find with grass verges or grass in the middles of the roads there you go. You can use that as well. Um, but when you're doing that, you can really and truly like work on so many different things. You could work on like transitions between walk and trot and halt and maybe even canter. Um, lateral work becomes really possible. And particularly if you're working on a lane where you've got these two kind of boundaries to work between. Lateral work is actually great to do in those situations. Um, and then also straightness. Like when, when you can do so many different exercises to to work on your you and your horse's straightness as well. Now, of course, you can put any like there's rhythm there's suppleness there's all these other things that you can work on there as well adjusting stride lengths so many things the key is to have an intention okay and that each hack instead of your hacks or your trails or whatever you want to call them being this like chilling kind of relaxing we're doing nothing now like start incorporating a few a week into actual working training sessions you can use that to actually move things forward. And of course, road work is also a great way to increase fitness and to strengthen legs, to build confidence, to build the trust between you and your horse. So much goodness there. But you do have to become intentional about it if it's going to work for you. And I think that if you can combine that with what we said about the previous flattish area, the 20 by 20, well, you've got a lot now at your disposal that you can use. Now, Obviously, not everybody is going to have the flattish area. I get that. But if you do, that's marvelous. Now, again, I'm going to invite you to join Connection if you are interested in doing more with this, because back in July 2021, we actually spent the whole month getting outside of the arena onto the roads and using different exercises there. So if you're interested in getting that, you'll find it in there. And then also there is a previous episode of this podcast called Three Exercises to Use to Develop Your Horse While Out on the Trail that you can listen to. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes for this episode, which will be even either below where you're listening to it now, or you can go over to stridesforsuccess.com forward slash episode 1260. Okay, the third opportunity you have or may have, I know not everybody has, okay, but I'm trying to kind of just give you a lot of different ways to work, 
But the third one would be undercover aisles, passageways and stables. Um, now, I do know that sometimes weather can be a challenge, and particularly if you don't have an indoor arena. Um, and uh, it's not just rain and cold. It's also extreme heat. Like, it can be really and truly, it, it's uncomfortable. It's very, very difficult to work in as well. So when you can get to somewhere where there's a bit of shade or a bit of shelter, provided by maybe an undercover aisle or a stable or a passageway, you, I think, need to learn how to use that a little bit more in your training, okay? So you can begin to use this from a groundwork perspective, but also then you could use it to ride as well. Um, And I think that a lot of riders think that riding is actually only about riding. Now, I spoke last week about groundwork, I think it's really important if you're not sure why go back and give it a listen the previous episode and um, but I do think grammar is really important and these are the spaces where you can work on this now you could start with things like woe and go you know the basics hey <laughs> stopping and starting but we all need to learn to refine those things a little bit more and then obviously you can do more fancy stuff like lateral work transitions bending flexing rhythm all that fun stuff you can go right the way up to self-carriage and collection okay and again having a plan is going to make all the difference. Now, I do have a previous episode of the podcast, again, linked in the show notes of this one, all about pressure and release. And I also have a free training that you can use on the ground as well. You can find that over at stridesforsuccess.com forward slash flex. Okay, it's there as well. Now, my final suggestion to you is going to be to make use of other facilities and also communities. Now, I do realize that this is not going to be possible for everyone. Okay, but if it is, this may be the time to begin you know just setting your sights a little bit further afield and seeing what's out there okay um if you have the opportunity to either box or or like in a trailer or to walk your horse to hack your horse to ride your horse to a more suitable horse arena or a riding space well I think you know this would be a good time to maybe explore that option and begin to make use of it okay many times um, riders will club together to rent a facility and whether they're doing it with a trainer or whether they're just doing it alone so they have somewhere to ride by clubbing together and maybe four or five of you going together to rent an indoor arena for an example it's going to be so much cheaper and you can also then use each other for feedback okay so that can help and then also if you have have maybe a local riding club very often they will then make use of other facilities and by joining the riding club you get to become a part of that and you can also make use of facilities that maybe you don't have but um, they will be able to get access to because of numbers and stuff like that so that might be also helpful I do think that it is really really important to really figure out a way to move forward and this is where an online community can help you as well and um, I think that if you have a group of people who maybe are from different parts of the world and that and they may have different ideas and different experiences that worked for them that you just haven't thought of yet so by just posting in those online groups and online communities and asking people for their advice or for their opinions or for their suggestions that can go an awful long way to really getting you unstuck and getting you moving again in your riding. Now, of course, you can join our group, our online community over at stridesforsuccess.com forward slash group. Whew, there we go. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for this week. This was like, there was a lot in there, hey? There was. But hopefully some of those ideas can help get you unstuck, get you moving and get you working with your horse again, particularly if having that beautiful riding arena is just a a dream right now might might happen in the future but right now it's not there for whatever reason um you don't have it maybe and hopefully one of these will help keep you and your horse moving forward over these coming months um, and keep you moving towards your goals together and again if you're looking for that exercise you can find it over at stridesforsuccess.com forward slash flex it's absolutely free you can get it there okay i'm gonna leave it at that have a great week keep well and I'll chat to you soon. Be good. Bye.